All right, welcome to part two. Uh, I have my fan blowing. Hopefully you can't hear that through my lav mic. I'm kind of new to all this, so. But here we have the grid case 1520 all splayed apart in its glory. And we are gonna go ahead and replace the CMOS battery uh, with a socket and a new battery, now that I have that stuff. And, uh, and then put it all back together without a hard drive installed. Boot it off a of floppy, hopefully and uh, it will boot. So we'll see what happens. Let's continue this journey. All right, we got our work area all cleaned up. Um, just about everything's taken off the board. Uh, here is our CMOS battery right there. Here's our SIPs, which we are not gonna touch. I would like to leave those right where they are and not move them. Um, it would be cool to maybe add some more, but uh, I think that'll do for now until we can get some kind of storage sorted out for this thing. But uh, anyway, I think it's time to get started. So it looks like we got this guy here to pull. We gotta unplug that. We gotta take that screw out right there. And probably gonna have to take this card out and set it off to the side. And it looks like it's socketed. So let's try that first. I'm gonna try and really minimize just how taken apart this thing is gonna to have to be. Oh, hey, look at that, even better. Well, whatever that is, it is now out. And we'll set that over there. We've got a, what feels like a power inlet right there. So we're gonna go ahead and take that screw out. All right, screw removed. Let's get this socket out of here. Boy, there is not much holding that on. Just the, that doohickey there. Oh yeah, we got this. All right, and the main logic board feels like it wants to go, although I think this right here is gonna have to come out, so. I think that's it. Oh, and these two. So I gotta remember where those go, and we got a screw right there. Uh, that one's got a spacer on it. And then these need to come out. Got my handy dandy needle nose, which are totally not the right tool for this, but I think it will work. All right, and I accidentally loosened these ones here with, and I forgot to restart the camera. So the rest of these should come out fine. Oh, you know what? I think these are bolted down. All right, so let's just try and lift, yeah. All right, so we're gonna have to take this bracket out. Carefully lift. Oh, <laughs> all right, she is free. Eesh. Okay. All right, this is gonna be super not fun because this thing is big and unruly and flexible and old and irreplaceable. So good times. Yep, there's our three things, doohickeys. Let's go ahead and tighten those up real quick. That's pretty cool. Grid logo, serial number. It's like looking at the dark side of the moon <laughs> on the back of this logic board. So looking at the spacing, yeah, it looks like it'll fit. I'm not gonna rotate the board because I wanna try and mo avoid moving it as much as possible, but I was a little worried that these legs wouldn't line up with these legs, but they look like they line up perfectly. Maybe there's some kind of standard somewhere I'm not aware of. I am. Definitely not an electronics expert, not even close. Thankfully, the motherboard is also marked, which is pretty cool, and so is the battery. So if we take our replacement battery, we take a look at it here. It's a little bit out of focus, but this is just a plain old boring half AA, uh, 14250, 3.6 volt lithium cell. And uh, it is basically roughly the same size. 
but of course it doesn't have legs on it. Negative on that side, positive on this side. Killer. So what we need to do is we need to uh, add a little fresh solder to that point and that point. And then I can use my handy dandy desoldering tool and suck that solder out and drop out the battery. All right, so let's do a little tin. Okay. Oh boy. Whoop, warm. Got it, yay. All right, so here's our empty spot. Um, had a little bit, of t little bit of trouble with the uh, solder vacuum, but I think we'll be okay. So what I'm gonna do now is add a little bit of solder to each hole. All right, I know I was blocking the camera, sorry. All right, now let's see if we can't free this up. Sweet. So we should be good. Yeah, we're looking really good. And once again, we want positive. We want it to go that way. So it looks like we are bumping up against a resistor. So we're gonna do something that I wouldn't really recommend. Double check that that's negative. And we're just gonna melt this a little bit. Yep, and that looks like that gives us just enough room for our socket. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's okay. It's not my finest work, but I think it'll work. Uh, I wish there were some obvious traces here that I could follow, but this is clearly a multi-layer board. Be nice if I could uh, track where this goes. Actually, I technically can track where this goes. Where it goes is this real-time clock chip right here, this Motorola. And if I were to look that up, figure out where it's positive and negative are, I'm guessing it's one of these two down here or up here, like on a Dallas clock. Let's look that up. All right, so I looked up the pinout for the Motorola MC146818AP real-time clock. And uh, this upper pin here, which I believe is pin one, and I am wrong, that's pin 24 and uh, pin 12 on the opposite corner should be positive and negative. So let's find out. Yay, 3.4 volts. So the real-time clock is getting power. So we should be able to put this back together and it'll work, right? Right guys, guys, no? So let's uh, reset this station here and let's put this bad boy back together.
All right, since I'm not 100% sure what this thing's gonna do, uh, when I turn it on, we've got our DOS 622, which I can't, I really only need the first disc, and I have a Q modem 4.5 light DOS boot disc. This one's only 720K, but this should be a 1.4 meg disc, I think. So let's try that one first. Well, mechanism's nice and smooth. Oh. <laughs> eh. All right. It was unplugged. Probably, uh, yeah, helps to have that other end plugged in. Okay, for realsies this time, I know for a fact that this other end is actually plugged into the wall outlet. So hopefully no sparks. All right. Well, we got a backlight. Hey! Invalid configuration information. I did hear it hit the floppy drive. All right, I'm gonna try a quick reboot. Ooh, here we go. Time of day clock stopped, please set current time. But it boots, it still works. I think it's okay to put it back together. Uh, somebody told me that if I let this sit here long enough, it'll eventually continue on. Okay, so this thing is all put back together and uh, let's just say I learned some things. Um, I learned that the little case that the battery goes in uh, doesn't really fit. Um, underneath the keyboard tray, uh, let's zoom out a little bit more here. So underneath the, uh, the keyboard uh, piece here, uh, there's, like a, there's like a scoop and then the, the display kind of pivots over that scoop. And what I've realized is that the the battery that this thing came with which i can't seem to find all of a sudden um was on the on the two little legs and it was kind of pushed back at an odd angle i never really thought about that before and uh, i think the way the reason why they did that is because they needed that um they needed that battery to um uh kind of get pushed out of the way so i, I think what i'm gonna have to do is actually take that battery out and replace it with a CR2032 holder. Um, that'll be a lot lower and should provide plenty of clearance uh, if there's room for one there. So I'll have to um, see if I can do that. And I actually have some, th I just realized I have some CR2032 holders. I got these things here. Uh, hello, there we go. Yep, so these are like Project Hobby CR2032 holders. So I may be able to just use one of these, pop a CR2032 in it and call it a day. But um, yeah, unfortunately this guy here I think is just a bit too bulky and it's too pretty much pretty, pretty much too tall. So uh, that's, that's a bummer, um, but uh, it's the way it goes. So on the plus side, this thing still works. Um, which I'm pretty happy about that. Um, backlight even goes off uh, if you don't use it after a while. Pretty forward thinking, I guess. And uh, yeah, so I've got the grid um, DOS 3.3 uh, in here. So if we do a DAR slash dub, you can see that uh, I've got files in here. All right, so if I type grid scan, typing at a goofy angle here, this is all just running off the floppy. It scans the system and shows me what's in here. Now the downside is right here. It says internal hard disk, 20 megs. 
So I need to figure out some kind of setup utility uh, where I can go in and change that. But uh, unfortunately that's gonna have to wait until after I replace the CMOS battery again. Um, I also found out, I'm gonna press enter to continue here. Uh, I also found out that um, a handful of keys in the keyboard don't work, unfortunately. So um, I'm gonna have to take the keyboard apart and clean it and hopefully that will be enough. On the plus side, I don't need to take this thing no, yeah, I'm gonna have to take this thing completely back apart in order to replace the, the battery all the way down to the motherboard again. But on the plus side, now I've done it. I remember it, so that'll be it. So yeah, the 1520 still lives and that is a great thing. Uh, is edit in DOS 3.3? No. So yeah, so that's what we get for now. And uh, that's the end of this series. Thanks so much for watching and coming along with me on this. Uh, this computer will come back uh, when I go to take it back apart again. I won't go through all of the pain in the rear about taking it all apart and stuff like that. We'll just skip to the good stuff, um, solder in a new battery, and, uh, and then probably spend more time on this pretty decently nice keyboard that this thing comes with. Um, it's not as good as the keyboard in my uh, IBM 5140, uh, that keyboard is a dream, but uh, it still gets the job done. Well, I guess it doesn't really right now since some of these keys don't work. So like, I think the O key, uh, what is it? Yeah, the zero key doesn't work. I guess probably help if I, yeah. So I'm hitting the zero key, no good. Um, let's see, what was it? Yeah, the L key doesn't work. It's mostly over here on this side of the keyboard, which makes me think that this keyboard actually might be damaged but uh, maybe something got spilled on it, but I'm hoping that uh, I can take this keyboard apart and just clean it and then it's back to, back to uh, working order again. So, and uh, this, it's also really tight, like right up in here where the battery is, it's probably actually under quite a bit of stress. So uh, we'll need to take this back apart at some point soon and uh, swap that out. So good times. And again, thanks for watching. And we'll catch you in the next video.